Ever since I first discovered analog horror, I fell in love with it. It was unlike anything I had seen before. The aesthetics of the visuals and audio transported me back to a much earlier time in my life. Memories of educational VHSs from elementary school, old news broadcasts, and retro TV interfaces, all with 4x3 aspect ratios, came flooding back into my mind. Something was off, though. Small glitches here and there, and messages that just seemed... off. If nostalgia wrapped a warm blanket around me, then the uneasiness of the video made the room freezing cold. Then the real horror elements began. Distorted faces, things lurking in the woods, hidden and subliminal messages, and cosmic beings of unimaginable size and power all became elements of a short internet series whose longest video was only 5 minutes and 11 seconds long. By the time I was all caught up with the series Local 58, I thought it was one of the scariest fictional series on the internet. I knew I was hooked. The unique aesthetic of Local 58 was like a drug that I needed to find more of. Eventually I went on to discover other series which would later themselves become juggernauts of the subgenre, like Gemini Home Entertainment, The Walton Files, and The Mandela Catalog. Suddenly I realized that this was no longer some niche little internet web series. Analog horror became an established subgenre that was becoming very popular amongst those who were looking for something new. With all those eyes looking at you though, more people will start to see the cracks in the foundation. Whilst the first couple of analog horror series were received with lots of praise, it wasn't until the Mandela catalog started gaining a lot of attention did many of the criticisms of the subgenre as a whole start to carry a lot more weight. For starters, there is an issue of originality. Yes, Local 58 did feel completely original and fresh at the time, but subsequent series would have to face the question of, well, what can we do differently from Local 58? There's only so many times you can have a morally ambiguous company release retro videos that all connect with some grand conspiracy about a secret alien invasion. There are obviously many, many other smaller issues I could go into here, but the two biggest ones I really want to highlight are this. Firstly, the market was getting really oversaturated, and even to this day it still is. If you take a stroll down the analog horror subreddit, you'll see at least five people a day promoting their brand new, less than stellar series. Hell, even I incorporated elements of the subgenre into my most recent short film. The second big issue was that it just wasn't as scary anymore. People could only look at distorted human faces or listen to some reversed audio so many times before they say, this again? With all that being said, what does the future hold for analog horror? It's kind of hard to tell right now. The subgenre is in a bit of a transitional period that's come to terms with the fact that the market is oversaturated and is still figuring out what to do about it. I really hope it doesn't end here because I do still love the subgenre and there are definitely things to look forward to. Local 58 is bound to make a new video anytime now that'll have a newer digital aesthetic as shown in their last teaser for season 3. The Mandela catalog has also really picked itself up from its earlier videos. Expanding the lore of the world really helped it to start standing out better. It's taking a more unique approach to storytelling and they actually got some decent voice actors in it. Also the Backroom series is very well made and I'm excited to see where that goes. All in all though, Analog Horror is in a strange spot right now. Although I'm optimistic about the future, I do have to admit that the peak of greatness is currently behind us. And now in order for the subgenre to survive, it needs some new life kicked into it. That's not to say there's no light at the end of the tunnel, but it might be some time before we can all bask in the glory of the daylight. So until then, sit back, grab some popcorn, and don't touch that dial now. Soon enough, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled program. That's right, you thought I was finished, but in actuality, I have more to say. 
in all seriousness, this video is made for a class project, and now, as another assignment for this class, we have to make an updated video. So, my choice is why either this, or a VR video that would crash my computer every time I try to make an edit. Anyway, since not a ton of time has passed since the original video was released, my general opinions on the subgenre haven't changed too much. I still think the market is oversaturated, but then again, so is pretty much everything that gets semi-popular on the internet. What's important are the big name juggernauts that made the subgenre what it is today. With that being said, Local 58, Gemini Home Entertainment, and The Walton Files still have yet to make anything new. Which in all fairness to them, these types of videos do take time to make. Especially given that most are made by just one person. However, the Mandela Catalog and The Backrooms have been going strong, with both channels uploading some pretty damn good videos since last time we talked. The newest Backrooms video is more of your standard affair, with people in hazmat suits walking around said backrooms, expanding the lore, revisiting old locations, and whatnot. The Mandela Catalog Volume 4, however, is much more interesting to talk about in my opinion. The production on this video is uh, the best we've seen in the series. It's interesting to see real actors this time around. Although the green screen didn't look real at all in certain scenes, I feel it's more of a stylistic choice given it takes place in the late 2000s. This is the kind of shit you would see on the internet at the time. You think your stupid burrito can do more everyday tasks than my pink frosted sprinkled donut? Yeah. Bring it on, Joe Knocker! Um... Uh. I just love how surreal the entire thing is. There's something about being stuck in these old chat rooms that clashes with these scenes that, and I can't believe I'm saying this, feel inspired by the German Expressionist film movement of the 1920s. God, I sound so pretentious saying that. All in all though, I felt it was a really damn unsettling experience the whole way through. And that's all I really have to say about this update. So, why don't we just get back to the ending? Then, sit back, grab some popcorn, and don't touch that dial now. Soon enough, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled program.